As the world changes, food systems must evolve in a manner that guarantees food security and sustainable livelihoods and environment. At the 2024 Sahel Food System Change Makers Conference in Abuja, Nigeria, how to minimize crop wastages and enhance a value chain that improves farmers' income were the dominant themes. Food systems transformation requires local and international collaboration to be able to provide the quality food needed to feed the world growing population. And the case of Africa is even more there, where a large part of its population struggle with food insecurity and malnutrition. So, this conference, facilitated by the Sahel Consort, is joined partnership from the German government, European Union, and others to help change makers in the agricultural space to optimize not only production, but value chain that improves income levels of local farmers. Let me assure you of our support for this worthy endeavor, which is in tandem with a critical plank of President Bola Ahmed Tinobu's administration's eight-point agenda. So significant are agriculture and food security. At the heart of this cooperation lies our shared vision of food systems transformation which we believe is critical to addressing the intertwined challenges of food security, environmental sustainability, and inclusive economic growth. How do we address food security in Nigeria? Because if we don't address this base need that underpins quite a bit of economic growth, there are a number of key indicators that would not be able to achieve. What do you think? Innovative governance models a pathway to food and nutrition security in Nigeria, the conference also seeks to explore the potential of public-private partnership in advancing different levels of agriculture in Nigeria. And joining us now in the studio is the managing partner Sahel Consulting, Agriculture and Nutrition, Temitope Adegoroye. I want to say thank you very much for finding time to be with us on Africa Weekly, Mr. Temitope. Thank you so much. Okay, now if we look at uh, what is happening the food system has basically been impacted by a problem of climate change and you talk about uh, food and nutrition and I'm just wondering how can you talk about food nutrition when uh, there seem to be uh, food shortages and all of that in what we see right now. So how do you, you know, respond to uh, these issues as it has to do with food system food and, mal uh, and nutrition in Nigeria? Thank you very much for, for having me here and thank you for that question. Um, yeah, I quite agree with you that uh, our food systems um, is in some very serious crisis. And I mean, we, we are actually in a crisis. Um, it, it, our food security crisis is, uh, I would say, a key aspect of our overall, uh, you know, broader social and economic instability. Uh, and it, it's, it has presented a, what we like to call a trilemma, you know, a trilemma of uh, food affordability, availability, and, and accessibility. Um, as at Q1 2024, um, we have about uh, 100, 100 million people in Nigeria uh, faced with food insecurity. And that's a massive, massive number from about 28 million pre-COVID, uh, you know, uh, during the pre-COVID uh, pre era. And it, it's, when you look at the, the 2023 Global Hunger uh, Index report, uh, Nigeria is, was actually ranked 109 uh, out of 125 five countries in the world. So that, that tells you that we're in some very serious crisis. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, the whole concept of food security, um, you can't talk about food security without really talking about the impact of, 
you know, low productivity, uh, the impact of uh, climate uh, change, and you know, issues around, uh, you know, issues around affordability of um, sustainable, healthy diets by the population. So all of these issues go together. And for us to, you know, address the food crisis and ensure food security, we need to address these compound issues. Okay, so at the Change Makers Conference, I, I believe uh, some of these issues were addressed. And can you tell us, you know, what will you say can, are the takeaways, uh, some of the major area of focus, discussions, you know, that you've had with private organizations and all of those that were there at the, uh, the conference. What can you say were the uh, recommendations or the discussions forward, you know, in tackling these problems? Thank you. Um, the, the, to just to, 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 to set some context, um, in 2022, Sahel uh, Consulting Agriculture and Nutrition Limited, uh, we, we, we saw this crisis and we decided to, cr to create this platform. So we started this Sahel Food Systems Change Because Conference in 2022 uh, to create a platform for uh, actors, key actors within the food ecosystem in Nigeria to connect. Uh, discuss dialogue and really come up with um, innovative solutions to really address the, the crisis we have at hand. Um, so that was basically the history behind the Sahel Food Systems Change Makers Conference. Uh, this year's conference um, was really focused on discussing innovative governance models. We, we believe that in order to address the, uh, the trilemma, uh, the, the compound issues within our food ecosystem, we definitely require some innovative governance um, you know, solutions or models uh, in, in governments, within the public uh, you know, uh, service, and also within the, the private sector, uh, even within the development landscape as well. So uh, discussion during the Sahel Food Systems Change Makers Conference 2024 was focused on discussing these models and really uh, ensuring that we can apply those principles in addressing the, the issues within our food systems. And uh, to be specific, some of the key takeaways from the conference um, were uh, really uh, partnerships and collaboration, for example, stakeholders really um, emphasized the need for partnerships and collaboration. Um, for us to address those issues, we definitely need to work together more. And you know, one thing that we've realized in our you know, years of work within the food systems in Nigeria is that we have a lot of organizations and actors doing different things. Uh, not that we're not doing the right things, but we need to work together to scale uh, the, the various activities of, of, different, of different actors. Uh, so collaboration and partnerships become very important. And we need to you know, explore um, you know, some public-private partnership models that are you know that have worked elsewhere uh, where do we see the government and the private sector for example working together and what is the role of the development um, you know sector uh, development organizations and partners in really uh, fostering that uh, you know collaborative um, you know leadership uh, between the, the public sector and the private sector to ensure that we really scale the activities of the private sector and I, and I, and I, and I said that um, intentionally uh, you know scaling the activities of the private sector because you see the role of the government is very clear uh, is to really create a neighborly environment as we like to put it uh, meaning that the government is ensuring that the system works the private sector already has, uh, ex uh, you know, extensive innovative business models that could actually produce food enough and put food on the table. Uh, how can the government support the private sector in, you know, doing that uh, in a really, um, you know, a really good business environment? And how can the development uh, sector uh, serve as a catalyst? To those private sector, you know, um, efforts in in ensuring that we increase productivity and ensure food availability. So okay. that's one, um, you know, key point that was really echoed um, during the conference. Okay. The the second one I would like to talk about is really um, integrating nutrition in all of our various, um, you know, national policies and plans. Okay. I think. We've we've done a lot of work and we've had lots several conversations around. Oh, we need to increase productivity. We're talking about agriculture. Sometimes we look at agriculture as a science, 
agriculture is a business and we need to start to really be very deliberate in how we look at agriculture i think agriculture and food and nutrition are, must go together and when we start to see nutrition as a very key component of agriculture and food then it helps us to design policies to not just you know increase the productivity of crops but ensure that you know the crops or the livestock commodities that we're producing are also um, you know taking the box in terms of nutrition so when people heat we're not just expecting people to heat to fill their, their stomach but we're expecting them to heat and you know heat quality we're talking about you know you know the dietary quality and access to sustainable healthy diet so policies and programs and plans of the government and development actors must definitely wear the lens of nutrition to ensure that uh, we are holistic in our in our plans and solutions all right so I, i'm just listening to you and i'm quite thrilled by you know your level of cooperation with the private sector i mean the takeaways with the private sector and all of that but Again, I'd like to draw your attention if it's one of the areas you, the Change Makers Conference, also take a look at. And if you like it or not, uh, the smallholder farmers play a critical role in our food system, right? And so I want to say that in terms of boosting, you know, the kind of food or bringing, producing the kind of food that will uh, uh, enhance or address the issue of food insecurity uh, in Nigeria what sorts of I mean support collaboration or kind of assistance uh, do you think the smallholder farmer can have in order to uh, uh, boost it's uh, the kind of value chains that we have and promotes uh, food uh, chain and all of that no, thank you very much. And absolutely, the role of the smallholder farmers, um, you know, are very critical. Uh, critical because I mean, we Niger Nigeria's food production landscape is dominated by smallholder uh, farmers, or you know, as we like to call it, small-scale producers. Um, you know, we're talking about 85, 90 percent of you know our food production activities, and you know we at Sahel Consulting we like to you know refer to them as food as, as the food heroes, right? Because without them we don't have food. Um, and I mean Sahel Consulting has done a lot of work, you know, in trying to uh, build the capacity of small scale producers. Uh, I mean, and not just Sahel Consulting. There are so many actors within the private sector and development landscape in Nigeria. Uh, providing a range of, you know, different ranges of support to, to the smallholder farmers that we have. Uh, but to be really very specific, uh, definitely smallholder farmers um, need to understand, you know, the good practices. Um, you know, what, you know, good practices can they adopt, you know, uh, how can they, you know, uh, innovate their ways within the food systems. And, you know, how are we building uh, deliberately building the right, you know, training curriculum to ensure that we provide them with the right, uh, you know, technical training, business, you know, capacity development for them to understand both the technical aspect of food production, but also uh, for them to start to appreciate agriculture as a business. So that's an area that uh, we definitely need to, you know, scale or, you know, increase our efforts. Um, I mean, uh, 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 Sahel Consulting has done a lot of work training those farmers in the last few in the last few years. Um, if I use an, an example of uh, work within the dairy sector in Nigeria, helping to you know build the capacity of farmers, uh, put them in groups and clusters, and you know train them to really adopt good dairy practices and ensure that we are linking them uh, to, this, to 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 processors who have take their milk and building that formal supply chain. That, that's very important. And there's so many uh, private sector companies in Nigeria that, are, that have these, um, you know, backward integration, you know, commodity uptake models from smallholder farmers. Uh, but not, they're not just uptaking their commodities. They are also, you know, providing them with training, with access to credit, with finance to, to scale. 
uh, those kind of activities within the private sector must definitely be supported um, by government and, and scale. So the government really has to start to really encourage private sector organizations and development organizations that are providing this kind of support to farmers. That is the only way our farmers can scale and increase their productivity. If they increase productivity, we have more food. Of course, one other thing that I must uh, you know, um, emphasize is the need to really help the farmers, you know, help the route to market. And one of the things to do to help the, the route to market for food is to really, uh, you know, um, introduce innovative storage solutions or innovative solutions for, for logistics to ensure that we reduce our post-harvest losses. Post-harvest losses, you know, in our food systems is it, it, so high, um, you know, it ranges from maybe 40% to 60% depending on the value chain you're talking about. Um, so you just imagine what happens if, if about 40% or 50% of the food we produce uh, go, you know, goes to waste um, consistently. Uh, it means that if we reduce post-harvest losses or cut out you know, these losses, we have more food as well. So it's not just helping farmers to increase productivity on farm. Uh, it also, you know, it's also trying to you know, ensure that we put in place the right infrastructure and the right market systems that really you know, cut those losses and ensure we have more food. Okay, so I'd like to say thank you very much, Temitakwe Adegori, for your time on Africa Weekly and sharing your thoughts with us on this important topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time with us. Right.